Okay, so it says uh, screening for colorectal cancer. Is it effective? Uh, thank you for that topic. It's, it's something I, I am interested in. It's maybe a sign of growing old that you, you operate less and, and you talk more. Um, it comes back to some of the public health things or community medicine principles you must uh, have been taught. If you want to screen for some disease, there are four things at least that you need to get right. One is the disease must be common enough. No point screening for Huntington's chorea. It's so rare. You have to screen so many people to find one. Second thing is you must have a tool to screen. And that is the uh, in this case, uh, the FOBT or fecal occult blood test or more popular now, FIT, uh, immuno, fecal immuno test. The third thing is you must be able to do something about it. No point screening for something like uh, polycystic kidney disease because you cannot intervene and do anything about that, even if you detect it. So you must have an intervention. And in, uh, they are for colorectal cancer. And I'll walk you through the evidence. The last of all is uh, it must be cost effective. And uh, we shall look at that as well. So let me run you through all the data regards colorectal cancer. The, the, the first thing we want to see about colorectal cancer, is it common? Well, here is a slide of all cancers and from the source is global can and you notice that there are 18 million new cases of cancer colorectal cancer is third with 10.2 percent that means about 2 million cases of colorectal cancer a year the right side is mortality and it is the second highest after lung cancer and therefore 9.6 million deaths about 9% of that, about 900,000 or so. That means slightly above 50% will survive. Slightly, nearly 50% of those who get colorectal cancer throughout the world will die. I'll show you data different in different countries. Now, this you see is in both sexes. Now we look at the breakdown between men and women and a few other things. One thing you see, the top, uh, bar charts are male. So we focus on that first. And it also has the incidence in high and low and medium uh, income countries. And I, I've uh, circled the line for colorectal cancer. It is third, as we know. But you notice it is high and uh, income countries that you have colorectal cancer. Uh, um, the bottom uh, graph for females. Uh, colorectal cancer again is third and you can see straight away that the incidence in women is less than in men. Uh, men have about 1.3 uh, times more than women. Huh? And for women, the top bar is breast cancer as you might know and well expect. So this is the situation with uh, incidence how, of colorectal cancer. I want to show you one more uh, graph and the range of incidences. High in Australia among indigenous, United States is high. Then notice how high the number is, about 60 uh, in high income countries. And right at the bottom, India among a group of people that it's two. In fact, I think actually, uh, no, 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 it's for stomach cancer that we have the lowest in the world. Um, so it's so much lower, 30 times lower in some places. So in those places, uh, no point in doing screening and actually they can't afford it actually. Where does Malaysia stand? Somewhere in the middle. Uh, uh, they also uh, break it up. It's higher in Chinese in Malaysia than Malays and Indians. Uh? Uh, 19.6 respectively and 12.2 and 11. Now I take you to some data from America. Um, and you can see the incidence in men and women, like I said, is slightly different, slightly higher in men, 57 and 42 in women. And the mortality, uh, it's 21. That means about half. Uh, the, just look at that uh, underlying 
uh, paragraph uh, I put there just to give you some numbers. 1,000 cases in the US and nearly 50,000 of them will die. Now, who dies? Here's the next graph. It depends on the stage. <clears throat> it might hard to see, but stage one, the top bar is very high. 90% plus will survive. Stage two, 84% will survive. Stage three, the next one you circle is 64%. And right at the bottom, if you are stage four, less than 10%. And it comes from this uh, 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 paper by uh, New Joint American Cancer Stage in Six. Actually, one interesting to point out to you is that stage 2B actually has a worse prognosis than 3A. And if you can look closely, if it's 2B, your chance of survival is 72%, whereas 3B is 81%. Okay, you go and find out what uh, uh, 2B and 3A, you, you need to know that anyway to treat uh, cancer patients because what's the right treatment for a patient depends on their stage. So we ask the question, with that burden of colorectal cancer deaths and cases, how can we reduce this? Three ways actually. One is prevent people from getting it and that's great effort that's necessary. That's a whole different talk. We can cure them when they get it, and that's surgery. Different people will tell you all about how to do the operations, ERAS, and how to uh, and all the chemo and all that's relevant. And the third thing to lower the death is get them at an earlier stage. And that's where we talk about screening. So the question I'm to answer for you is: does screening work? Uh, and uh, I want to take you through <clears throat> the results from this study published in 2015 uh, in Taiwan. Uh, and it's the effectiveness of fecal immunochemical testing in reducing colorectal cancer in Taiwan. Uh. Well, what are they dealing with here? It's a study with 5 million Taiwanese. The population there is nearly 30 million, 28 or so. So not the whole population. And it's over five years, 2004 to 09, and it's from people, yes, the screening people from 50 to 60. Uh, then they, they have two groups. The screen group is only 1 million. Therefore, the unscreened group is about 4 million. And they, all of them did the FIT test, and they found out of screening 1 million, nearly 50,000 are positive. 4% are positive. And they got 95% of them to undergo colonoscopy or sigmoidoscopy. It is very high. Usually, if you have a positive result in practice, <coughs> uh, not that many will come for your colonoscope, but they managed to get <coughs> 95%. And on scoping, they found 24,000 adenomas because there are other things uh, precancerous that you detect and you treat them actually that's also effective and 2850 invasive cancers what kind of cancers were they staging is important like i told you and see their results of the staging 13 percent were carcinoma in situ 35 percent in stage one 21 percent in stage two 24% in stage 3, 7.2% in stage 4. Compared to the not screen group, 5% carcinoma in situ, 16.1% stage 1, 17.8% stage 2, 31.8% stage 3, and then 19%. They've managed to reduce a lot from, of stage 4, but notice even in the stage group, not everybody is stage 1. But it's very high. 50% are stage one or less in uh, ordinary practice. 
there are not prefix there. Yeah, I've already mentioned. Uh, not everybody actually gets an early can you detect as early cancer even if you screen. But the mortality in the screen group was thirteen point seven compared to thirty six percent in the unscreened group. I just got a sign saying my internet unstable, but usually it's okay. Any problem? Are y'all hearing me? Hello? Yes, doctor, we can hear you. All right, now let me know if uh, I break up. Okay, we carry on. Uh, so there was a 62% reduction in mortality as a result of this screening project in Taiwan. Survival of 86, uh, because his mortality is 13.7%, the survival is 86%, whereas the unscreened group, the Taiwan mortality is 63%. I, I think I uh, earlier told you that uh, that's not to a, a whole world, it's something like 50%. Now I'm going to show you uh, some statistics from di very different countries. Huh? Uh, real world data not under study. America, 65% overall five year survival. Taiwan is now 63%. Brunei, 50%. What about Malaysia? Now I show you the data. Several studies here. Look at the most left column, the overall uh, survival of all stages. Uh, early study in Kelantan, wow, only 34%. Then the middle one you see in Kuala Lumpur, there's one 60%, one 42%, so roughly about 50. Sarawak, 45, nearly 50. It's, uh, the nationwide study, 48. So ballpark figure is 50%. One in Negeri Sembilan, slightly less. Than it. But they are, uh, it's around there. So if you do many studies, it will come to about that. But the survival by stage, <coughs> um, we have very few stage one cancers. That's why the, uh, just now I showed you elsewhere, stage one, 90 plus percent. Here, well, we seem to have not achieved that. But basically, I think in Malaysia, we should lump stage one and two together because there are too few stage ones. Huh? And that comes to about, if you uh, lump them together, it comes to about 70 percent, which is not as good as the 80 percent elsewhere. Stage three survival, I think it's comparable elsewhere. Uh, you look at all the different figures, somewhere between 40 to 50 percent. And stage four survival, uh, I think it shouldn't, it is it, not above uh, 10 percent. Uh, if the reporting 25, 20 percent stage four survival, actually, you already know there's some inaccuracy about data. Often it's that. Some people are mistaged in the data entry, data entry at stage four, and they are not. They see a lung nodule, they call it stage four, but actually it's not a cancer, so the person survives for a long time. Okay, here we go about the distribution of stages in Malaysia. Uh, I already hinted to you. Stage one, two percent, five percent, or overall two percent. So compared to Singapore and Taiwan. They are getting 16% or 21% stage. Okay, take a note that the Negeri Sembilan one has a big column of not stage 19.3%. So it will affect um, what the other columns are. Uh, but the not stage one are usually not in uh, stage, uh, stage one. Uh, looking at stage two, what do we see there? I think you can say it's somewhere about 30% in Malaysia. And in stage three, somewhere about 40 plus percent. And stage four, maybe about 20 to 25%. The not stage ones, uh, I can tell you from their survival, they are actually stage three or four. So that's Malaysia. Now we'll apply the results of screening. Uh, uh, to the incidents and all. In the US, since their incidence rate is about 50, I earlier mentioned, they will have, because their population is 3 million, uh, 150,000 cases. If you increase their survival from 65 to 85%, you will save 30,000 lives. In Taiwan, their incidence is 
35. If they have 8,400 cases, you increase from 3, 63% to 85, you save 1,800 lives. Out of their population, currently about 3,000 die. So you will save 1,800 lives in Taiwan. Malaysia, because our AS incidence is low, we start from 4,500. So you have much fewer cases in Malaysia compared to Taiwan and other countries. But our survival rate is lower. If we do get it up to the magic figure of 85%, we will save 1,600 lives. But even if we can achieve raising uh, um, the survival rate to 65% by detecting them earlier and bringing them, let's say, not to that wonderful study uh, result, but to what Singapore and Taiwan are doing, we will save 600 and 75 like let's say that's a, a a fair target if you can screen more and detect more uh we'll save about that's the number of lives a year we will save if we get a good roughly screening program going and then that's to say currently about 2200 people also die from colorectal cancer a year in malaysia out of the 4005 who get it now some data about screening here in Malaysia, published uh, in the paper I, I, I put for you up there. It's uh, 100 and they looked at uh, five, over five years, 100, over 100,000 people, I would say, tested. This wasn't screening because it was done in KK. It was done with people sometimes with some symptoms. But let's say uh, that what happens when people have a FIT positive or this one is FOBT. Uh, 9% were positive, but only 55% of them would show up at colorectal cancer screening, colon sorry, at, at colonoscopy. And then they detected polyps, like earlier I showed you, and they detected 4% cancers. But I, I don't know the stages. Uh, was it the same like the staging in Taiwan or the staging different? I asked, I wrote to the author, they couldn't tell. So in other words, uh, when you do the mathematics, you, out of the 120,000 screen, 0.2% had cancer. That means you screen 488 people to detect cancer. So the question is, uh, is it worthwhile? Um, so there are some data they will this is this the last of the four things i, I said uh, uh, screening program I, I, is it worthwhile people will uh, ask you for dollars and cents it's hard to really put the money on somebody's life but then you have to because they say hey this money we have we could spend it on strokes or we could spend it on diabetes is it more worthwhile there so what's the number and there is one study by natra published in 2012 about how much it costs to treat colon cancer for one year. And there's a rate cost for stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Notice that it's of course cheaper to treat someone in stage one and most expensive to treat someone in stage four with the palliative care support and all that. So it, say instead of what we have right now, which I said, I showed you just now, stage one is 3%, stage two, 35% roughly, stage three, 40% and stage two, 20%. If we could shift that to say stage one is 20%, stage two, 25%, stage three, 35, uh, 3%, and stage four, like actually stage four, no different our data than other countries. With our 4,500 cases, we will save, six million ringgit the total cost of the treatment if you you do the maths is it costs 105 million to treat colorectal cancer these are based on calculations from a university hospital private hospital sure it'd be different colorect a uh, government hospital we don't know the numbers but uh this is putting a number to it so is that six million something if you uh, spend on the screening, will you spend more than six million? Is it worthwhile? Uh, th this, is, uh, this is the public health question. But I want to tell you one thing is that 
not the cost it's just direct medical cost the hospitalization you must that that won't be the figure you calculate with because you must remember the person who gets colorectal cancer uh fall sick needs people to care the expense of that person caring the person not working the loss of income uh, there's a lot of so uh i think uh probably my time is up i have i haven't overrun things um so that's about uh screening for colorectal cancer